from the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you are born to be. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter with today's message on Leadership Secrets. Marriage is a school and we keep learning all the time. It's good that, you know, like you said, you can have uh, stories, you know, true stories or examples that you can share with people to encourage them. Amen. Amen. Okay, so there are three problematic areas in every relationship. There are three problematic areas in every relationship. In this instance, we're talking about marriage. Um, the first is communication. The second is sex. And the third is money. And it's always in that order. Communication is one. Sex is number two. Money is number three. It's amazing how we've made money to be number one. But it's not. Communication is number one. Sex, number two. Money is the third one if you can communicate the sex and the money falls into place but if you are unable to communicate then there's a problem with the other two so today as Bishop announced earlier I'm going to be dealing with the second part of the problematic area in marriage sex somebody say sex see I can see everyone already going like this <laughs> going like that it's one of those subjects, it's one of those subjects that somehow when it's brought up, you know, people tend to kind of feel a bit uneasy and a bit, you know, funny and awkward about it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's everything that God made, God said it was good. God said it was what? So sex is good in the right context. Amen. Amen. In what? The right context. And what better place to learn it than in church, than in the house of God, than out there where they're perverting everything and making it to be like some sordid little affair when it's not. Amen. So let's start with Genesis 2. Let's look at Genesis 2, verse 18 to 25. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. It says, And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. Next verse, please. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found and help me for him let's go on and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones somebody said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman somebody say she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man next verse therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed amen they were both what? Naked, the man and his wife, the man and his wife, the man and his wife, the man and his wife. Say it with me, the man and his wife, not the man and his girlfriend, not the man and his mistress. The man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. Amen. Amen. We should not be ashamed 
when we are in each other's presence naked. Amen. Husband and wife. Amen. You know, I know our culture has a lot to do with that, but I'm not dealing with that today. Amen. Our culture has made us, you know, some of the women a bit prude and shy and not wanting to be naked with our husbands and all that. But in the beginning, it was not so. They were both naked and they were not ashamed. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. So it was God who said it was not good for man to be alone. So he made for man a companion, a suitable helper for him. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. And the two shall become one. Amen. The man and his wife. Genesis 1, 27 27 and 28. It says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. Let's say that together. Male and female created he them. Let's say that one more time. Male and female created he them. Not male and male or female and female, but what? Male and female created he them. People can say what they want to say, but the word of God is sure. Amen. And it's important. We're talking about sex. We're talking about, you know, sex in marriage. And it's important that we understand that it was God who said that it was no good for man to be alone. So he created for him a companion, a suitable helpmate. And the word of God says, male and female, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. And then he said, male, let's say together, male and female created he them. So all this foolishness, we shan't go into that. Amen. Amen. We could be here for a while. Hallelujah. You know, I'm just establishing this so that when we're listening, when we're hearing, we know that we are talking about what God created, how God created it, how God intended it to be between male and female. And he said, a husband and wife. Amen. Somebody say that. Husband and wife, male and female. Amen. Verse 31, verse 31 of Genesis 1. Let's read that together. Let's read that together. He said, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good. Let's stop there. Very good. I'm glad you, 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 you said that. Let's read that one more time. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. Let's say that one more time. And God saw everything. Somebody say everything. Everything, everything, everything. that he had made, and behold, it was very good not just good but it was what very. very good so everything god made was very good that includes sex amen. amen of course i'm talking about sex in the right context amen. amen sex in marriage as god intended it to be is very good somebody say sex in marriage yes. is very good yes. and i know there are some young ones who are yet to get there but you need to learn these things anyway to correct the, the foolishness that is being thrown at you out there by Hollywood. Amen. By Hollywood and the mid and, and the government. Amen. And what? The government. You need to learn these things and know what to expect when you make that transition. Amen. So that nobody can deceive you. Amen. And get you to do things in the wrong way or before your time. Amen. 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 So all of you, you know, you're all part of it. Amen. Everything God made was good, including sex. Amen. Now, Hebrews 13, 4. Let's look at Hebrews 13, 4. It says, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. I just want to dwell on marriage is honorable in all. Amen. Marriage is honorable, what? In all, and the bed undefiled. So when you are married, marriage is what? Honorable. That means that sex in marriage is what? Honorable. Sex in marriage is what? It's allowed, amen. Sex in marriage is what? It's allowed, amen. There are those that think that, oh no, you know, oh, even though I'm married, maybe once a year or something, you know, we'll meet up or something once in every six months because of, you know, culture, because of uh, uh, the, 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 the things they've grown up with or the things that they've heard. But marriage is what? Honorable. Somebody say marriage is honorable. Marriage is honorable. God made it so, amen. Amen. So sex in marriage is honorable. Amen. Sex in marriage is honorable. Sex in marriage is good. 
Today, sex has been made by Hollywood and the government to be demeaning, something that is demeaning. When you look at the way they portray the women selling their bodies and, you know, all the things that goes on, it's been made to be demeaning and nothing but a cheap thrill, uh, something to be almost ashamed of. Amen. It's, something, it's almost like something to be ashamed of, but not the honorable thing that God made it to be. We're taking it back, amen. amen. I said we're taking it back, amen. amen. They've made it to be nothing but a cheap thrill, uh, something to be almost ashamed of, but the Bible says that everything, somebody say everything, amen. that God made was good. Amen. Everything that God made was good. Amen. When used the way God intended it to, use, to be used, amen. amen. So everything that God created was good if we use it the way the, the maker intended it to be. Amen. Amen. Bishop has given this example. If there's a, a fridge or is it a TV and you try to put water or drinks in there, it won't work because that's not the way the maker or the manufacturers made it or intended it to be used. Amen. 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 So everything, I'm saying this for a reason, everything God made was good or is good when used as the way God intended it to be. Amen. 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 We have seen from the above scriptures that God, when God uh, uh, created Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, take charge. So one of the, the, the uh, uh, reasons God created or designed sex is for procreation. That is having children. Amen. 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 And then number two is for pleasure. Believe it or not. Amen. 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 So it's for number one. Procre Don't leave me hanging here. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm saying is true. Amen. I haven't even got anywhere yet. Hallelujah. So number one is for children. That's procreation, having children. Number two, for pleasure. Then number one, which is having children. We don't do too badly in. Amen. 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 We don't do too badly in that arena. Amen. In that sphere. Now, but the pleasure one, mm, hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 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 So let's look at 21 great reasons to have sex. Well, <laughs> not every day, but on the regular. Amen. I know the title said 21 great reasons to have sex every night or every day. I guess if you have that capacity, well, praise God. Amen. 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 Some people have a very high sex drive. So, you know, more power to them. Amen. See, that's what I'm saying. That this, These are the things. These are the most problematic areas in relationships. And yet, as soon as we mention sex, everyone is like we're cringing and we're thinking, you know, because of what the media has portrayed or what the government has portrayed or what we grew up with. You know, when we're growing up, if you want, if you, you know, as you're growing up, you're curious and you ask, you want to ask questions, you know, kind of thing. So from there, you don't ask uh, uh, the, the, the correct or the, 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 the people, the right source, and you go around corner, corner, amen, somebody, amen. corner, corner, trying to find out. So you grow up with this, you know, about it, that, oh, it's something bad, and you, you can't talk about it, and it's a taboo, and, you know, so you, we have this thing about mis mistake, you know, this misconception about sex, when really it's a good thing, hallelujah. Amen. amen. Okay, so sex does have health benefits, amen? Believe it or not, sex has what? Health benefits, all right? Sex has what? Health benefits, believe it or not, amen? And that's uh, one of the things that we're gonna look at. I have um, from an article that, you know, I'm always reading. Bishop said, find things that relaxes you. Mine is reading. I'm always reading, researching, finding things of interest. And this is one of the things that I came across. That blessed me. So I wanted to share that with us. Let's look at the number one reason why you should have sex on the regular as a married person. Amen. And those that are not yet married, that you are aspiring to get married, me. this is one of the reasons. Number one, you look younger. So forget the plastic surgery. Amen. It's legal. Amen. And so it's free. Amen. It's your entitlement. Hallelujah. Okay. So forget the, the plastic surgery. The, what is that? Lipo, what do you call it again? Liposuction. Facelifts. Botox. Botox. Okay. All right. So number one reason why you, you, you know, having a, a regular sex and I'll tell you how regular soon, amen, is that you look what? Younger. 
Okay, he says that last uh, few weeks back, Dr. David Weeks, clinical neuropsychologist at the Royal Edinburgh Hospital, revealed to a psychology conference that his extensive research had found older men and women with an active love life looked five to seven years younger than their actual age. Five to seven years, what? Younger than their actual age. Amen. Amen. But you don't have to be at it every night to enjoy youth enhancing effects. In fact, during his 10 year study, he found that um, quality as well as quantity was good. You've seen the movies, you've read the novels, you've had the heated debates at least twice during the group meet and you still can't fathom what each other want? What husbands want and what wives really want? The new must-have relationship book by Michael and Bernice Huttonwood. Ignorance is not bliss and false information and assumptions will only lead to heartache and frustrations. In this book, learn the keys that have unlocked the gateway of joy, peace, pleasure, and fulfillment in a successful marriage. Topics include 40 facts about marriage, engaging the force of wisdom, communication, money, sexual matters, and much more. Order your copy today. Please call, write, or visit our website using the information on your screen. Those who had sex twice a week, okay, twice a week, okay, so don't pass that panicking here, amen, all right, said that it ben they benefited from this anti-aging uh, uh, factor, amen. And he says that the anti-aging benefit was stronger if the sex was classified as loving. If sex was what? Loving, the benefit was more, amen. So being in a marriage situation, when he says the sex should be loving, it means that you're caring about one another. You take your time, amen, with one another. You, you, up, you, you are sensitive to each other's needs, amen. We are sensitive to what? Each other's what? Needs. Take your time. Somebody say take your time. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry, amen. We have all the time in the world, hallelujah. We have what? All the time in the world. No one is going anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So take, take your time. And you need, what you need to do is to discover what the other likes. Bishop has said earlier on, just as in the daily things, knowing what this, the other person likes, you must discover what the other person, what your husband or what your wife likes, that gives them pleasure. Amen. Uh, within... within Reason, of course, amen. Okay, let's keep it pure, hallelujah. Let's keep it pure and let's keep it moral, amen. Amen. Whatever it is that you do uh, to give each other pleasure, as in foreplay, must be something that both are comfortable with. Both are what? Comfortable with. They don't feel condemned or feel dirty or, or any, yes, anything like that. All right, so it's important that you know we bear that in mind when we're talking foreplay. Amen. So he says, Do not rush, take it easy. Amen. So that both can enjoy the, uh, uh, the act. Amen. And both can climax at the same time or one after the other. Amen. And he says, Of course, there are days of quickies. Amen. Married people, you know what quickies are. We're not talking about that. That's a different issue. Amen. But that shouldn't be every day. All right? If you're married and it's a quickie all the time, when you have sex, something is wrong. And that needs to be dealt with. Hallelujah. Amen. So as I said before, when I use the word sex, I'm talking about God-ordained sex in marriage, which is good. Not something that, you know, some sordid something that is being portrayed by Hollywood or other places. Okay. So number one, it makes you look what? Let's say that one more time. Younger. So we want to look younger. Married men, married women, we know the antidote. Amen. 
Amen. Number two, it boosts your fertility. This will sound like music to most men's ears. Studies have found that the more often you make love, the better quality your sperm would be. Semen health was found to be best when sex had occurred less than two days before the sperm was tested and greatly decreased after 10 days of abstinence. So if you are trying for a baby, keep sperm fresh and in tip top shape by having sex at least twice a week. Here's that twice a week thing again, amen. At least what? Twice a week. <laughs> and not only around the time of the woman's ovulation. He says frequent sex has been found to help balance a woman's hormones and relate her periods, which can further boost chances of conceiving, amen? Amen, so it boosts your fertility, that's number two. So when trying for a baby, contrary to what we've known before or proud to what was said before, that you need to preserve everything and wait till a particular time before you can, you know, have sex or make love, contrary to that belief, no, a regular, apparently, according to this research, apparently a regular uh, uh, sex life or frequent sex can help to boost your fertility, amen. 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 Number three, let's move on. It fights, number three reason is it fights colds and flus. <laughs> it says having sex once or twice a week has been found to raise your body's level of an antibody called immunoglobin A or IgA, which can protect you from colds and flu. One study found people who have sex or make love more than once a week have 30% higher levels of IgA than those who don't have regular sex. All right, this is a research that, you know, as I, I'm reading, I'm mentioning the names of who did what research and all that. Amen. So, it fights colds and flus. Amen. Amen. Number four. You know, this, this nation, we have flus and colds a lot, amen. Every week or every other week, you know, one is sniffing or the other. Apparently, this is an antidote, amen. amen. Uh, only for the married, of course, amen. amen. The unmarried, you just still have to just hang on a little bit longer. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. And apply the word, amen. amen. For now, amen. This is only to the married, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Number four, let's look at number four. Disease proof your body. Amen. One of the reasons, reason number four is to disease proof your body. He says having high levels of the natural steroid DHEA, DHEA known as the anti-aging hormone is believed to be key to keeping your body fit or fitter for longer. He says during sex DHEA is secreted throughout the body, and after an orgasm, the level in the bloodstream soars to five times its normal amount, amen. So this high level of the natural steroid, DHEA, known as the anti-aging hormone, is believed to be key to keeping your body fitter for longer, amen. amen. It keeps your body, what? Fitter for longer. So all this feeling sick every week and every other week and everything else, we can uh, uh, disease proof our body, amen. All these ailments, hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Number five, let's look at number five. It lengthens your life, amen. It lengthens your life. It lengthens your life. A study carried out in Australia found that people who made love at least two, three times a week, it is a two, three times a week, so we're giving a clue as to, you know, for those who are not sure how regular they should be, two or three times a week, amen. A study carried out in Australia found people who made love two or three times a week had 50% lower chance of dying for, uh, uh, of dying for any medical reason than those who only uh, made love or had sex once a month. Serious, isn't it? A study carried out in Australia, I'm reading that again, found out people who made love two or three times a week had 50%, that's a high percentage, 50% what, uh, lower chance of dying of any medical condition than those who perhaps made love or had sex once a month. All right, so married people, we're finding out reasons why we must, you know, amen. So we can live to, to see our children's children, enjoy the fruit of our labor, all the harvest we have, all the seeds we have sown, we can live long and see it and enjoy it all. Amen. 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 The 
Relationship Package by Dr. Michael and Bernice Huttonwood. Experience total joy and satisfaction as you embrace five carefully written books for every relationship. Single, married, divorced, and separated. Learn the dynamics of what makes a good relationship and how to sustain it for a lifetime. There are some people you marry them, that's the end of your life. Your marriage partner is for destiny. So that's why I say you don't only look at love and the woman's skirt and the man's six pack or four pack. If my wife was looking for four pack and six pack, she would have married me. I don't have any pack. It was my personality. And she discovered that this is a man she can fulfill destiny with. And I discovered that she is the only woman who can assist me to fulfill destiny. Marriage choices is from the angle of destiny. Pack includes no ringing, no dinging. 50 common mistakes singles make. 200 questions you must ask, investigate, and know before you say, I do. What husbands want and what wives really want. And the 101 tips for a great marriage. A must for your library. Order yours today and receive a special discount on the entire package. Please call, write, or visit our website using the information on your screen. Is a man on a mission. With a mandate to raise generational leaders. Called to set in order the things that are out of order. And to bring leadership development, human capacity building, and wealth creation to all. Welcome to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. Also, watch us on KICC TV for leadership secrets and maximizing your destiny series every week, Monday through Saturday. Your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood. Where God isn't, there is no vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. And where there are no people, Details are shown perish. on your screen. Please call 0208-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk for more details. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed. From the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you were born to do. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter with today's message on Leadership Secrets. He says, 30 minutes of vigorous sex or lovemaking burns up to 100 calories, which is the same as a small glass of wine. So if, if you have uh, moderately uh, active sex twice a week, then you will burn an extra 5,000 calories a year. 
Amen. All this, I mean, this, you know, you guys who do exercise and now, you know, some people are always reading calories and all that. Amen. So, you know, half an hour, I can burn up to 100 calories. Amen. And then, you know, if, if, if I'm active twice, at least twice a, a week, that's about 5,000 more calories I'll be burning every year. Amen. Amen. That's great. Amen. So those of us that are health conscious, I mean, it's good for us. You know, this middle spread thing is not good because, you know, it it's all brings all kinds of diseases, you know, uh, uh, diabetes, hypertension, you know, it's not good for us. So, it's, and, and this is a good one. The married couples, this is a very good one. It says, uh, varying your positions is also great. Amen. Amen. It's a great way and a great, and great fun uh, to tone different muscle groups and keep uh, limbs lean and flexible. Amen. It says very, that means don't, you know, one, one position all the time. There are over how many, I don't know, uh, different positions of love making. Amen. 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 So don't be stuck in that missionary position, that one position all the time. It does get a bit boring. Amen. So after a while, you don't really want it because you know what is coming, innit? But when you vary it, a man or woman don't know what is coming next. Hallelujah. Amen. So it makes it more exciting, right? Because you, you don't know what to expect. Hallelujah. And it's not just that, but it's actually a, a fun way to tone up the different muscles, the muscle groups, and it keeps your limbs, what it says, uh, uh, lean and flexible. Amen. So, you know, you can move around. You can move a bit more. All this, e, I, o, ow, ah, e. You know what I'm saying? You move a little. You say, e. You move the, ah, e, uh, you know, you can't reach my, ah, all the aches and pains. <laughs> all right. This actually helps to keep you lean and what? Flexible. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Number seven. It eases those nasty period cramps. You know, you know, as, as women, sometimes before your period actually comes, sometimes you experience some terrible uh, cramps. And he says that this actually uh, eases those nasty period cramps. Many women say uh, period pain diminishes if they make love during a cramp attack, okay? One theory is that uh, muscle contractions that occur when you reach peak levels of excitement relieves tension in the muscles of your uterus, the ones that causes uh, menstrual cramps, therefore easing the pain. Amen. Remember, it's for married women. Amen. And men. Amen. Amen. All right. So it, it, that's, it eases nasty period cramps. So those of, of, of those who are not yet married begin to, you know, anticipate, amen. All those nasty cramp pains, period pains will diminish when you get married, amen. Amen. And make love twice or three times a week, amen. With your husband or with your wife, amen. With your what? Husband or with your wife. Who is a male or a female? Amen. Amen. Who is a what? A male or a female? Amen. Amen. Number eight, let's look at number eight. It helps lower your risk of incontinence. You know, sometimes people are, um, you know, when people have accident, they have weak bladders. Okay? Yeah. Simply put, all right, they have a weak bladder sometimes. Medical is a medical condition and things like that. All right? But it, this helps lower your risk of incontinence. It says good sex is a great workout for a woman's uh, pelvic floor muscles. The muscles that control oxygen and also steam the flow of urine, uh, reducing leakage and incontinence. So pregnancy and the menopause can weaken these muscles significantly. But the stronger they are, the lower your risk of developing stress incontinence and prolapse later. So let's face it, sex is a far more exciting and enjoyable way of doing uh, the uh, pelvic floor muscles, amen, than trying to do it on your own. So this is another great way of doing it, amen. So it does help lower your risk of incontinence, amen. And then number nine, it prevents a heart attack. Contrary to, <laughs> yes, you know, contrary to what we have uh, heard or 
what we have been told in the past. It prevents a heart attack. It says lots of studies have found that regular sex or love making can ward off heart attacks, not bring them on as, as it was once feared. It says one study at Queen's University Belfast found that having sex or making love three times a week could have uh, could half half your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Another study in Israel found that women who had two orgasms a week were up to 30% less likely to have heart diseases than those who did not. Okay, so this is this is another good one. It says that a, a study at Queen's University in Belfast found that having sex or making love two, three times a week can half, literally half, you know. So if it's 100%, half of that, whatever percentage risk you are, it actually halves your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Amen. Amen. Let's look at number 10. I know in the past, you know, people were, were told, oh, don't be too hard at it. Don't, you know, you could have a heart attack in the process, you know. So some grew up thinking, no way, I don't want to die, you know. And so, <laughs> and so kind of, you know, put that to the back burner. No, no, maybe once in a while, but not a regular thing. But now we're being told that it actually helps, you know, your, your, your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Amen. Okay, number 10, it says it increases your attractiveness to your spouse. It what? Increases your attractiveness to your spouse. So high sexual activity makes the body release more hormones or ferro, it says here that pheromones, pheromones, chemicals, these are chemicals that enhance your appeal to the opposite sex or to your spouse. Amen? High sexual activity makes the body release chemicals that actually enhance your appeal to the opposite sex, i.e. your spouse. That is why the more sex or love making you have with your spouse, the stronger your desire will be to have sex or make love with them again. Amen. 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 <laughs> so it increases your attractiveness to each other. And that is the truth. The more you know, uh, uh, um, love you make with one another, the more you're attractive to one another. That's the way it should be anyway. If we are doing it the right way, amen. That is being loving, amen. Then you're always anxious. You look forward to whenever you get together again. But when it's not done in the right way, when the other one is just there to take or it's not considerate or yeah, to take, you know, considerate of the other one, but you don't really look forward to that, do you? Amen. Amen. But when it's done in a loving way, it actually what increases your attractiveness to one another, to each other, and you actually look forward and anticipate the next time. You can't wait, literally, you can't wait to get together again. Amen. Okay, number 11. This is a good one for us ladies. It says, it smooths out your wrinkles. Amen. It does what? <laughs> smooths out your wrinkles. Remember, all these things has to be on the regular in order for it to work. Amen. It has to be what? On the regular for it to work. Amen. And only if you are married. Amen. Until then, use the word, as Bishop said, and the creams. Amen. <laughs> to sort out those wrinkles. Hallelujah. Amen. It smooths out your wrinkles. The hormone oestrogen is pumped out during sex or love making, which can in turn have a plumbing, plump, you know, plump, plumping effect on the skin, helping to smooth out those fine lines. This is especially used for following the menopause when a woman's skin can become dry. Or when you have dry skin and your skin tends to wrinkle a bit more. Oestrogen levels naturally drop when your skin becomes dry. But one America study found that menopausal women who had sex or made love every week had oestrogen levels that were twice as high as their counterparts who did not. All right? So the hormone oestrogen is pumped out during sex or love making, which can in turn have a plump. It plumps up your skin. Amen? Helping your skin to look smooth. Get rid of those wrinkles. Amen? So that's another way of smoothing out your wrinkles. So no Botox. All right? You know some people who have done that, you can tell when they smile, 
Their face looks scary. <laughs> and when they frown, you can't tell. I mean, their faces just stay the same. You can't tell what expression or what emotion they're going through because their faces are the same because of that injection they've had, all right, to smooth out their wrinkles. But this is a very good way of doing, you know, getting rid of those wrinkles. And it's free. Amen. And it's what? The good thing about all this is that it's free. Amen. Okay. Number 12. <laughs> Give yourself an all over healthy glow. Amen. You know, you, you just want to have that healthy glow. Some people, you see them, their skin. You know, when you have good skin, you have a healthy glow. You look healthy. You look nice. Your skin just glows. So this is one of the ways to give yourself an all over healthy glow. According to research again carried out at the Royal Edinburgh Hospital, sex promotes skin renewal. God is amazing. I mean, I'm th reading all this and I'm thinking, oh wow. So all these chemicals and things that we keep putting into ourselves and trying to look young and try and, you know, fix this and pull that and, and do this and all that, it's unnecessary. God has actually put all these things in one thing that can take care of all that. Amen. Amen. It says, according to a research carried out at the Royal Edinburgh Hospital, sex promotes skin renewal because it's an aerobic form of exercise. Amen. It's what? An aerobic what? Form of exercise. The, the scientists uh, behind this study found that, again, vigorous sex pumps higher levels of oxygen around the body, increasing the flow of blood and nutrients to the skin and then pushes newer, fresher skin cells to the surface, making skin look healthier. It actually gives you an all over what? Healthy glow. Your skin looks fresh, your skin looks healthier. Amen. Number seven, I mean, how many of us, we all like to look, you have that all, you know, that glow, don't we? Healthy glow. It does improve, and number 13, this moves to number 13, it improves your self-esteem. When you have good skin, when you have that glow about you, it improves your what? Self-esteem. Amen, especially as women. I mean, I know the men now, apparently the men spend more money on beauty products than the women do. I don't know about whether it's the, the, you know, the normal man or the celebrity man, but apparently now they are, they are competing with the women for the beauty products, amen. Amen. Why? Because you improve your self-esteem. So one of the most important benefits noted in a recent survey undertaken by the University of Texas, US, was that participants who had uh, sex regularly felt more confident about their bodies. They felt what? More confident about their bodies. They, they, had, uh, uh, they, they, were, they felt better about themselves. They had a, a good self-esteem. Amen. 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 Marriage is a wonderful thing, and provided we understand it and are prepared to work at it using the prescribed manual, we can really enjoy it and experience lasting fulfillment. Introducing the 101 Tips for a Great Marriage by Michael and Bernice Huttonwood is written as a fence builder to prevent you from becoming one of the numerous casualties of today's abysmal marital statistics. Some of you get married and you always want to take, always want to receive, always want something to be done for you, not you for somebody else. That's not love. That's not love. Love is as strong as death. Love wants to please the other party, not themselves. Love wants to sacrifice for the other party. There are tips for a good, solid, exciting, spicy, creative, and enjoyable marriage. A must-have for every couple in marriage or are preparing to get married. You love me? Y'all gotta show me you love me. You don't just say it, you show it, what? 101 Tips for a Great Marriage by Michael and Bernice Huttonwood. Order your copy today. Please call, write, or visit our website using the information on your screen. A 
this. I mean, when you, if you're doing all these things and you know, it's shifting the middle spread, middle edge spread, and it's keeping you fit and it's, you're doing aerobic, it's aerobic exercise and everything, surely your body is bound to look good, amen. amen. So it makes you feel better in yourself. It gives you that self-esteem, that confidence about yourself, which means that you're able to function, you're more productive, amen. We are more productive when we feel better about ourselves, amen. But when we have all these insecurities and we're not sure about, oh, how do I look today? Oh, I'm not sure my need and all that. We're not, we're not as productive, amen. We miss out on opportunities out there, amen, because we hide ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. So it improves your self-esteem. Number 14, it lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your blood what? Pressure. A Scottish study found men and women who had plenty of sex, amen, plenty of sex, amen, amen. coped well with stress and had lower blood pressure than those who didn't. Researchers at Bingham uh, Young University in the U.S. also linked frequent intercourse to lower blood pressure. So it lowers blood pressure. When you're stressed out, it's one of the ways to get rid of the stress. It lowers your blood what? pressure. Amen. And then number 15. So if you go to the doctors and they tell you you have a high blood pressure, hallelujah somebody. Amen. The married said, oh my blood pressure is high. Oh right then. License to. No, only if you are married. Amen. Amen. Okay. Be relaxed. Amen. Remember it is good. God said what everything he created was what? Good. And we are looking at the health benefits of something that God created that is good for us. Amen. 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 So don't feel, you know, hallelujah. Okay, number 15, it banishes depression. Amen. If it banishes depression, you know, and there are some people that are constantly depressed, perhaps marriage might work for them. Amen. It's a fact that look at it. Sometimes, I mean, you've, I'm sure you know of people who were, you know, and, and they're, they are married now and they are blossoming, they are blooming, they look lovely. And you tell them, gosh, married, married works for you. Marriage suits you. You know, so this actually banishes, it says what? It banishes what? Depression. You know? <laughs> So I shall leave it there. So like any exercise, and another uh, uh, cure for depression is exercise. All right, exercise. So if you feel down and feel low and all that, find some exercises to do to lift your spirit up, amen. amen. And remember, as we are talking about having sex or making love with your spouse, these are all forms of what exercises as well. So that banishes what depression. Let's face it, those of us that are married, sometimes when we haven't had uh, sex or made love for a while, we start getting all grouchy, cranky. It's true. You've, been, you've, ab you've abstained too long. Get back at it. Amen. You don't need no counseling. Hallelujah. You don't need no prayer or fasting. Amen. You've been, you, you've been abstaining, for fasting too much. It's time to break that fast. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. Depression begins to set in and we feel cranky and grouchy and yeah, you start backing at everybody and and you think, oh, what did I do? What did I say? That's what it is. Amen. Get back at it. Banish that depression. Amen. Amen. Check it out. It's true. Get cranky and start, you know, as soon as you, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next fight. Amen. You know, so let's, let's, let's remember that. It says like, like any exercise that raises your heart rate, sex causes your brain to release feel-good chemicals that boost your levels of uh, uh, serotonin, the happy hormone. You know we have a happy, we have something in our body called the happy hormone, things that make you happy. You know, it releases those, those hormones and you're happy. Sex is one, amen. 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 It releases those hormones, the happy hormones, to lift your mood. So uh, serotonin is the body's key antidepressant chemical and one of the major reasons people smile <laughs> and feel happy and relaxed after sex. Amen. amen. You know, hu husband and wife, amen. I'm yet to see anyone after you know, sex. They could have been angry with each other before and all that. But afterwards, all I see is smiles. Amen. 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 
because of those feel-good hormones that have been released uh, 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 during this time. It makes you feel happy, it makes you feel relaxed, and it makes you smile. Amen. Amen. You know, some people go around all day with a smile on their face. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it says sexual active women, married women in long-term relationships are less likely to feel depressed than women who go without sex, without marriage, or without sex. According to a study of nearly 300 women by psychologist Gordon Gallup in the American Archives of Sexual Behavior. <laughs> Amen. Now number 16, <laughs> cure that headache. Amen. It cures headaches, believe it or not. Seriously. <laughs> it says having a headache might be an age-old excuse not to have sex, you know. And the women use that. I understand that men use it now. Strangely, these days men too are very good at, at coming up with excuses not to have sex. So I've been told, amen. I don't know, you know, the, the percentage, but, you know, there's something that the women used to use back in the day, amen. He says that having a headache might be an age-old excuse not to have sex, but the scientific evidence says that, uh, to the contrary, sex can help shift pain. This is because making love causes a surge in the love hormone, oxytocin, plus other feel-good endorphins, which can ease pain. You know, this eases pain. So women have reported that their pain from both headaches and arthritis improved after sex or after love making. All right, so those regular headaches, those that are married, those regular headaches can be cured by regular love making, amen. It shifts the pain. And then number 17 is slashes stress. Okay, it says in a study in the psychology journal, researchers found that people who had sex in the last 24 hours coped better with stressful uh, situations or scenarios than those who did not, all right? So it slashes stress. Sometimes when we are stressed out, it's another good way of what? Releasing that stress, amen. Research has also shown that touching and cuddling, amen. Touching and what? Cuddling. I know many couples don't seem to know how to touch each other or cuddle each other. But touching and cuddling during and after sex reduces the body's levels of cortisol, the hormone that is secreted when you are stressed. All right? So learn to touch, not just, you know, when it comes to uh, making love or having sex, but learn to touch each other, learn to cuddle each other because it lowers the levels of cortisol, that the hormone that is secreted when you are stressed. So by touching each other, you're releasing that stress level. Amen. Now number 18, it says one of the great reasons is that it kicks your insomnia into touch. Amen. It kicks your insomnia into what? Touch. Insomnia is when you can't sleep. It says the oxytocin released when you climax has another benefit. It can help you drop off, amen, according to research. Both men and women release these feel-good hormones just before orgasm, and it causes, as it races through your system, it promotes relaxation and sleepiness, amen. So there's actually a genuine excuse for why men fall asleep straight after sex, amen, amen. The Relationship Package by Dr. Michael and Bernice Huttonwood. Experience total joy and satisfaction as you embrace five carefully written books for every relationship. Single, married, divorce, and separated. Learn the dynamics of what makes a good relationship and how to sustain it for a lifetime. There are some people you marry them, that's the end of your life. Your marriage partner is for destiny. So that's why I say you don't only look at love and the woman's skirts and the man's six pack or four pack. If my wife was looking for four pack and six pack, she would have married me. I don't have any pack. It was my personality. And she discovered that this is the man she can fulfill destiny with. And I discovered that she is the only woman who can assist me to fulfill destiny. Marriage choices is from the angle of destiny. 
pack includes no ringing, no dingy. 50 common mistakes singles make. 200 questions you must ask, investigate, and know before you say, I do. What husbands want and what wives really want. And the 101 tips for a great marriage. A must for your library. Order yours today and receive a special discount on the entire package. Please call, write, or visit our website using the information on your screen. Is a man on a mission. With a mandate to raise generational leaders. Called to set in order the things that are out of order. And to bring leadership development, human capacity building, and wealth creation to all. Welcome to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory. Raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. Also watch us on KICC-TV for leadership secrets and maximizing your destiny series every week, Monday through Saturday. Your host, Bishop Michael Huttonwood. Where God isn't, there is no vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. And where there are no people, details are shown parents. on your screen. Please call 0208-689-6010 or visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk for more details. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed. 